body is Dr. Joe, and today I'm going to show you some stretches and exercises for... Is that a video call coming in? Oh my gosh, it's JK! Hey JK, how you doing? Good, hi, how's everyone doing? Doing great, doing great over here. Hey, I'm shooting a video, and I just want to know if you could tell us a little bit about your channel. Yeah. Definitely. Um, well, I do a lot of cake decorating, so I decorate a lot of things that I'm passionate about. So mostly movies, comic books, a lot of Disney stuff, but it's all, all comes from the heart. Yeah. Awesome. And how can everybody find your channel? What's the name of it? Oh, my channel name is youtube.com. Oh wait, slash Koali Pops. So Koali Pops, that's what you're looking for. Okay. Awesome. Excellent. And so I'm guessing that when you're doing all that kind of stuff, you get a lot of aches and pains and some stuff going on. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, well, there's this thing I've kind of developed. It's like this hunch. I think it's called like the chef's hunch because you're always like over like a table trying to decorate and stuff. Your body is constantly in this one sort of position and that causes a lot of strain when I try to like move up or like move around. I'm so used to just being this way that it's hard to to maneuver my body so that it's I can stand up straight and that causes a lot of problems for me. I can imagine that it does. Well I've got some stretches and exercises that will hopefully help that out so let's check it out. Awesome, awesome, great. Disclaimer alert, disclaimer alert. So that chef's hump that JK gets is very similar to a dowager's hump and basically what that is is when your posture starts rolling that upper back kyphosis bending forward rolling forward and if you don't correct that over time that can cause a lot of problems. So we're going to start off with really just trying to open up that chest with some stretches and some exercises really just to get that opened up first. So we're going to start off with a scapular squeeze. With the scapular squeezes or the shoulder squeezes, what you want to do is imagine that somebody's hand is right on your spine, right in the middle of your back. And what you want to do is try and take those shoulder blades and squeeze that imaginary hand back. You can use your elbows to squeeze, but keep them low and close to your body. So it's not squeezing back this way. You want to squeeze down and back so your shoulders stay down. So it's not coming up like this, but it's coming down and squeezing back. Almost like I'm trying to touch my elbows back together there as well as those shoulder blades. So hold it back there, try and keep those shoulders down for about three to five seconds. Take a little break and then do that five to 10 times. But you see how my chest is kind of opening up when I do that. So if you're kind of hunched over, this really helps open back up that chest. So it should feel really, really good. The next one is going to be a chin tuck. With chin tucks, they're really great for helping correct posture in general. So a lot of times if you're bent over, focusing on something, working on something in front of you, cooking, baking, your head starts going forward like this, and then these muscles get overstretched and these get tightened up, and it ends up causing a lot of problems and strain and, and pressure in your neck and uh, shoulder area. So a chin tuck, not going down this way, but you're going to go back this way. And what I like to do is just kind of place my finger on my chin here. Your finger's going to stay in one spot, but it's really just a starting point so you can see how much motion you have just by doing a couple of chin tucks. So I like to place it here, leave that finger there, and then keeping yourself level, push everything back. So you're going to go in like this where you've got, you know, some double chins right there. Just hang out about three to five seconds. And then when you relax, you should have a little bit of space between your finger. And if you do, that shows that those muscles were tight and you're recorrecting everything. So if I'm here and I pull it back, it's opening everything up. So again, three to five second hold, just do five or 10 of those. And those should really start help opening everything up. The next one is going to now start getting some motion again in those shoulder blades, but moving your arms with it just to open up everything so you're not hunched over so much. So this time you're going to do a scaption movement. And what scaption is, is it's not straight out in front of you, that's flexion. Right out to the side is abduction. Scaption is kind of right in the middle and that has to do with that scapula, that shoulder blade. And so what you want to do is thumbs up 
you're gonna start with your hands kind of down and you're gonna go at that 45 degree angle, not here, not here, but kind of in the middle and use both arms and just come up and kind of squeeze them up. So what you want to do while you're coming up and down is kind of squeeze those shoulder blades a little bit, kind of like you were doing that squeeze and squeeze and lift up and then come right back down. So not really a hold here, but it's just starting to track all those muscles in the right direction, how they're supposed to be versus when they're over like that. So just start off with about 10 or 15, you don't have to go all the way up, that might be a little tight, but just working that motion a little bit. Then the next one is going to be a T position, like the letter T, not like drinking tea. But arms straight out with your thumbs up, and this time you're just going to push back behind you a little bit. And that should help open up that chest area. So this is not quite a stretch, it's more of an active movement where you're just kind of warming up those muscles a little bit to get into the stretches, which we'll do in, in just a minute lying down on the ground. So just kind of pushing those hands back, but opening up that chest area. So again, it really shouldn't be painful. It should feel kind of good because you're opening everything up and stretching it a little bit. So if it's painful, don't push quite as far. You're still squeezing those shoulder, back, shoulder blades back when you go back and just do about 10 to 15 of those. So the next ones are going to be on the ground and we'll start off with a stretch for those pec muscles. If you happen to have a foam roller, th this works really, really good for stretching those pec muscles, those chest muscles, and you can do it a couple different ways. And if you don't have a foam roller, I'll show you how to do it without one in a second. But this works really good because if you can just kind of sit and lie down on the foam right on your spine, Make sure you have your head supported so your head's not hanging off, but just kind of be in this position where it's right on your spine and you should be able to feel it without having to do any other motions. But then what you're going to do is bring your hands up kind of into a stop sign position and just let them hang down like that. And that you should really feel it in those pec area, those chest muscle areas, just like that. And if you want to change the stretch a little bit, you can bring your arms up some and then just let them hang down. So this one's going to be a stretch where you really want to hold it for about 30 seconds. So just let it relax. Let those elbows go down to the floor. If they don't touch, that's okay. But hold it for 30 seconds, come up, relax, and do three of those. The next one is turning it horizontally. So this is going to be a chest stretch, but it's also going to be that upper back stretch as well. So if you have that hump, that kyphosis, this might be really uncomfortable to start off with. If you happen to have something like a pool noodle that's really thin, you might want to start off with that. A bigger one might be a little bit too much, but you can use it. Just don't feel like you have to go all the way back with it. So this time you're just going to kind of put your hands behind your head and you're well, roll it back and get in the position first. Put your hands behind your head and just lean back like this. So you can see that's really just opening everything up. It's stretching that upper back. And again, if you can, just relax over it. Take some deep breaths. And let yourself stretch. So 30 seconds, three times. Again, that might be just a little bit too much if you have a lot of that hump going on. So you might want to try something smaller. You can even take um, a beach towel, roll up that beach towel and put it right there. And so you'll just have a little bit, but that will help open up that stretch as well. Then to again, help with the upper back area, and this one will get into the lower back a little bit as well, just to kind of loosen everything up, is a, a press up. So now you're going to get on your stomach and it's kind of what it sounds like. Start off with your on your elbows and just hold the position here. You want to try and keep those hips down. If, if you're pushing up like that, you're not really stretching the back. So you really want that, that back just to curve downwards that way. Because again, that's just kind of stretching the spine in a different direction than what you're hunched over doing. If this is easy and it doesn't really feel like much of a stretch, then you can go into a little bit of a push-up position. But same thing, try and keep those hips down. If they come up, you're not really stretching that back. So you should be able to relax. If it hurts when you do this, come on back down to the elbows and then just hold that stretch for about 
30 seconds and then do three of those. So also a couple things to do to help with all of that is to stretch your hip flexors because if you're hunched over all the time, those hip flexors become tight and then start pulling on the pelvis. So you want to stretch out your hip flexors and you want to strengthen your core. So we'll do those now. For hip flexor stretch, there's a bunch of different ways you can do it, but an easy one is just to get on your knees, put one leg forward, and the one you want to stretch should stay down. The key with this hip flexor stretch is to keep your upper body straight. People tend to want to like bend forward and stretch like that, but then I'm still not stretching that hip flexor right there. So keep your upper body straight and just shift your whole body forward. So right here is where you should feel that stretch. So same thing with the stretch, hold that for 30 seconds, do that three times. So make sure that you're doing both sides so you can alternate back and forth to give the other side a little bit of a break. But again, keeping that upper body fairly straight and just shifting everything forward until you feel a stretch in that hip flexor area and holding it for 30 seconds. Then the last exercise is a bird dog exercise where you get on all fours. And this is really to help the core out and, the, and those trunk muscles in the back to help keep you nice and stable. So just getting on all fours, or we call this quadruped, and then you're just gonna do an opposite arm, opposite leg kick out. But try and keep your stomach tucked in tight and your back fairly flat. So if you're arching down, that's not good. You wanna keep everything nice and straight and then you're just gonna do a kick this way and then come back down and kick that way. So try not to wobble, really try and use that core to keep yourself stable and then coming back down. So just do about 10 on each side, but go slow and steady where you're making that core work. So those were your stretches and exercises. Hopefully they'll help you out when you are making your cakes and all your awesome videos. Yes, definitely. Um, I, I kind of need it. So all of that is just, if you have even more, I love it. I love all of it. Awesome. Will do. Will do. So everybody make sure you go to JK's channel and subscribe to him. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Ask Dr. Joe. And remember, be safe. Have fun. And I, I hope, hope you feel better soon. soon. Make sure you check out JK's collab with me where I went over to his channel and we asked each other a bunch of fun, silly questions playing the matchstick game. What's the matchstick game? We'll check it out. Click on the link up here.